Kia ora, good evening. Invercargill saw its second sunniest summer on record this year with 661 sunshine hours. The city's sunshine count was the second highest level since records began in 1932 at 122% of normal. According to NIWA's National Climate Summary for summer 2012-13, it was an extremely sunny summer across the country, with Southland sunshine's total also up. However, there was no lack of rain in the south either, with Southland and Fiordland seeing close to normal summer rainfall. Temperatures were also close to normal in the south. Invercargill City Council has agreed to a rates rise of just under 1.4% for the 2013-14 to year. The increase is more than half the originally suggested rates rise for residents. An increase of 4.68% had originally been put forward, but Finance and Policy Committee Chair Neil Boniface says Council has found ways to alter the budget, including contract savings and extra dividend from Holdco and savings on borrowing. This has meant the rates increase has dropped to 1.39% instead. This was passed by councillors last night and will be added to the annual plan. Success continues at the South of Museum's Tuatara breeding program. Sarah Bedford explains why five new additions are particularly special. Southland's oldest resident, Henry the Tuatara, is a father again at the age of around 115. Around three or four weeks ago, it was thought six eggs laid by 75-year-old Lucy last August would not be viable, but there's been a surprising discovery. These Tuatara hatched just three days ago. They've been getting some special care and they now have around 90% chance of survival. Five of the six Tuatara survived and have gained some strength, having had special care and spending their first few days in an incubator. Southland Museum and Art Gallery Tuatara curator Lindsay Hazley says he hadn't held a lot of hope as the eggs were misshapen. Concern around just how collapsed they were led him to intervene and help out some of the Tuatara. Well, I knew they were going to die if I didn't, so there's everything to gain and nothing to lose. But uh, I've had good success historically, and also some have failed. And uh, through trial and error, I know how much interference I can actually do. But basically, the... the, the the helping hatching process would be just to get the head out of the egg and uh, clear its breathing as, as nostrils so it can actually breathe the air itself. Henry shot to international fame five years ago when he bred for the first time, but until now he'd only bred successfully twice, both times with the same tuatara. The new additions will add genetic diversity to the population and while they'll stay at the museum for now, it won't be their long-term home. It will probably help national breeding programs to give some diversity to other institutions because if I've got males and they have produced females that can give a good mixing pool of sex ratios in captivity. So they won't be getting bred against anything we have here but they'll go to other institutions later. There are around 90 Tuatara at the museum and now that Henry has proven himself three times, Mr Hazley says he's staying positive and hopes Henry will continue breeding in the future. As for the baby Tuatara, they'll be getting some more special care over the next few months, after which it's hoped they can go on public display. Sarah Bedford, South Today News. More than 1.7 million forms have been completed online for this year's census held yesterday. At its peak, Statistics New Zealand's census website was processing around 130,000 forms an hour, according to Statistics Manager Morris Williamson. Questions asked in this year's census were essentially unchanged from 2006. According to Internal Affairs spokesperson Andrew Williams, he says census costs government a lot of money and this was a lost opportunity where new questions addressing major issues in the country could have been introduced. Results will be released from December. Seven Southland residents also became New Zealanders today with a citizenship ceremony at Southland District Council. A ceremony at Council Chambers was held for the new citizens this morning, being sworn in by Mayor Frana Cardno. The new citizens were encouraged to participate in their communities and to embrace their new privileges and responsibilities. The seven new Kiwis originally hail from Britain, South Africa, the Philippines, Sweden and Czech Republic and are living in Lumsden, Winton and Te Anau. Among them, Sonia Smith, a sheep milker from Winton, who says the minute she landed, she thought she was a Kiwi. It's really good that, you know, you're um, a citizen and I feel like I'm a Kiwi, so, but you never forget where you come from. So how long have you been here, Sonia? Twelve years. And you came to this part of the country because? Um, my husband's a Kiwi and he won't move out of Southland. 
comfort. No, we love it. It's green because it's green, to be honest, and rural. So a small community, lovely people. Wouldn't really want to live anywhere else, to be honest, as much as I've wandered about. Um, it's Oakland, is it? He's anchored me down and we're not going nowhere. <laughs> Still to come, redevelopment of Invercargill's skate park is a step closer. Welcome back. Invercargill City Council has agreed to a larger loan to fund the $800,000 redevelopment of the Invercargill Skate Park. It was agreed at a council meeting last night to obtain a loan of $300,000 for the project, up from the original $100,000 requested. The loan would be repaid by council over time and is still to go out for public consultation. A report by Community Development Manager Mary Napper says the increased loan should allow the plan to be completed without any aspects being being compromised. Council Chief Executive Richard King says the project will go ahead at the Ellis Road site. Department of Conservation staff have just returned from a trip to the Subantarctic and Antipodes, with the Navy also taking part in the project dubbed Operation Endurance. Sarah Bedford spoke to Department of Conservation Outlying Islands Program Manager Pete McLelland about the work. The first phase went down to the Auckland and Campbell Islands and Snares. And down there we did a variety of tasks, we picked up a research team, we took down a lot of building materials and a construction team that we left on Campbell Island. We had some researchers on board and as well as track maintenance and just, just the jobs that we need to, need to get done on the islands. And then phase two was out to the Antipodes and Bounties where we picked up a research team, we took out some boardwalk and installed it. And we also did a shag count on the bounties, which is the first time a major count's been done in 30 years. Now tell me about that count. What's that actually going to mean in terms of uh, research and future work? Well, the Bounty Island shag is it's the rarest shag in the world. And the last count was done in the 70s, last con um, comprehensive count. There have been several attempts previously. But the nature of the islands means it's very difficult. So you can't do it by zodiac and a big boat can't get in around the islands, whereas the Navy have these rigid hulled inflatables, the, the ribs, that are absolutely an ideal platform. So we did a count and we found out that the numbers are still doing, are doing well, you know, a uh, possible increase in the numbers, although it is only a one point count, we need to do more counts. So that, that just means that we can actually sit back and don't have to do any management on that species. So while it, it's sort of a, a non-result, it's actually really positive because we can focus on other species that do need the work. Now in terms of research, what other research was happening while you were down there? We took down a, um, a, an algae, it's a, called a phycologist, and she studies algae, which are primarily seaweeds, and she had a great time. Uh, she managed to collect uh, 97 different species at Campbell Island and over 110 different species at, at the Aucklands. So she was in, in phycologist heaven, just getting all this variety, ones that she had never seen before, some new ones for New Zealand. Um, and that has implications. She, the work that she does ties into cancer research and a whole variety of different, different jobs. We also had botanists down there looking at um, the impact of marine mammals on the coastal environment, which then can be related back to the mainland here if we want to restore a coastal environment because the seals and and elephant seals and that have largely gone, he can then help design the, what needs to be done for the recovery of those places. Now in terms of the, the research work that's actually happened down there, uh, when are we going to see results from that? It's coming out all the time. I mean, you know, we've got, we've picked up two different albatross research teams, so they provide us with a, a, an annual report. We can see what's happening with the populations there. Some of the stuff, like the seaweed, there'll be a, a, you know, we can find out what she collected, but some of the, the actual meaningful stuff that, that, you know, whether it relates to cancer research or whatever, may, may take decades. So there's not a, you know, this is a cut-off point, some of it just leads on to other research. For more than a century, Plunkett has offered support and development assessments for New Zealand children under the age of five and their parents. 73 services are offered south of Queenstown and the organisation is currently holding its appeal week, something which is key to what can be offered. A lot of that money goes to support um, Plunkett services such as their playgroups, giving opportunities for parents to come in and be connected, to learn um, information about 
any aspects around parenting itself. So we've got parenting education groups on offer. We have coffee groups um, also, mm -hmm. and our volunteers also run events in their community. We've just had one, for instance, in Otatara recently, which was the duathlon on the weekend. So it's just for um, our parents and our volunteers to be able to connect and do things with, special things with their children. So you have a number of services um, that need to be funded through this type of fundraising as well as these buildings that you, you own in Invercargill? Yes, our volunteers own all our Plunkett buildings across the Southland area and um, one of the reasons our volunteers have done that in the past is to ensure clinics are held in their local area. So all our money for the appeal stays in our local area and we'll be going towards um, renovating um, some of our Plunkett buildings. It might also go towards supporting a car seat rental scheme and purchasing new car seats for our rental scheme, so yes. So the um, the theme for this year um, is, is Big Blue, is yes. he new? Yes he is, um, uh, the theme is give a, um, the Plunkett appeal is give a bear, bear hug, so it's all about um, recognising our children need big bear hugs as well and, and we do as parents along the way too need to be supported, so yes uh, uh, the theme is new. And you also have a new method of, uh, of fundraising this year too. Uh, we're texting, um, you're able to text HUG at 24, sorry I'll just have a wee look, 2454 um, if you want to text a $3 donation, so that's a new option for us. So all of the money raised in the province stays in the province? Absolutely, so anything um, we collect tomorrow in the CBD area and out the supermarkets um, will stay here in Invercargill and so uh, that's across the, the whole of Invercargill. Uh, the whole of Southland. And that's it from the news team coming up in sport. We speak NRL and the Warriors with the mad butcher Sir Peter Leach and Southland cricketer Jason Duffy. From us, good night.